So the oblique kick has been a controversial kick for a long time because it causes massive knee injuries. We saw last night with Khalil Roundtree with an oblique kick to his opponent, immediately had to stop the contest, and there was concern that he had a very severe knee injury. At the ringside, Michael Bisping made a comment that the UFC doctors were concerned of ACL, PCL, and MCL injuries to the knee. So I want to just quickly discuss the oblique kick and what it does to the knee, and then maybe we can have a little conversation or thought about whether or not it should be banned. So the oblique kick basically works by targeting your opponent's knee while their foot is planted on the ground. And so when the kick is delivered to the outside part of the knee, because the foot is planted on the ground, basically the foot is unable to move with the kick and all the energy goes through the knee. So if we look at this knee model, the oblique kick comes and it attacks the front or the outside part of the knee. And as we saw in last night's contest, what happens is the there becomes a stretch or opening of the inside part of the knee. So in orthopedic surgery, in orthopedic injuries, things usually fail in tension or when they're stretched. And so because the inside portions of the knee are getting stretched out, that really targets these structures on the inside, such as the MCL or medial collateral ligament. The medial meniscus also is attached on the inside and that can actually rip off the back of the capsule or the lining of the knee joint. And then the, the next thing that would get stretched out would be the ACL, which is uh, middle of the knee, which helps with rotational stability. So in orthopedic surgery, when you have a blow from the outside part of the knee, and you, if you have those three things get torn, we call that an unhappy triad because it's a very severe injury that's gonna require orthopedic surgeries and, and a lot of rehab and a lot of time missed because of such an injury. So hopefully he didn't have this unhappy triad. That would be much more likely than if um, he did have the reported ACL, PCL, and MCL. When you have multiple ligaments being uh, torn like that, it's usually from a knee dislocation, a much more severe injury. So that would be not as likely as this unhappy triad. Again, the most common would be stretching and tearing things from the inside outward because again, things fail in tension in orthopedic surgery. So the inside things would go, the things that get stretched the most go first and then the energy goes this way. So it's likely the MCL was the most severely injured during that oblique kick, okay? So that's what's going on with the anatomy. Now, in terms of the discussion, you know, on Twitter, there was a lot of U UFC athletes themselves calling for the ban of this oblique kick, and there was a lot of back and forth. So, you know, some people are for banning it, and some people are against banning it because, again, it is a fight. So that's where it gets kind of controversial. But again, the downside with this oblique kick is it does really tear structures of the knee and knee surgery unfortunately does t require athletes to take a lot of time out for surgery recovery and that's you know time out of the sport and time missing income from fighting and so that's where the controversy lies from a personal standpoint in terms of my opinion on whether the the kick should be banned i think it's i think it's it's a it's a it's a very tough call because again we are fighting so I would be much more interested in hearing the opinions of the athletes themselves than my own. Uh, but there's, I think there's definitely arguments for it versus against it. Of course, we know the, the 12 to 6 elbow has been banned because that can be dangerous to the head and neck area and the central nervous system. So we have banned that. There's some other people that now are, are asking whether or not we should ban calf kicks even because we've had these recent tibia fractures in well-known athletes such as Chris Weidman and Conor McGregor. So with this oblique kick right now, it is fully legal. Um, I don't know if it's gonna change anytime soon, but I would be more interested in hearing the opinion of the UFC and MMA athletes themselves because they're the ones that are placing themselves at risk every time they step into the ring, okay? So that's what's going on with that breakdown. If you guys enjoy this breakdown or other MMA injury breakdowns and sports medicine, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, check out some of the other videos we've done, and we'll see you guys here next time.